Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to InfoGamer. My name's Nathan, and for this video series, we'll be creating our own clone of the game Stack Color. At the time I started looking into creating this tutorial series, Stack Color was number one in the free games list on Google Play. Now, this tutorial series is going to be a bit different than our past playlists, where for each video, I'm already going to have the code and assets created, but only the code and assets that are new for that video. This will save on time. Time, not having to code everything out during the video, but we'll still be able to keep everything clear and organized as I'll be highlighting the code that we've already covered in previous videos. Now before we get started, I want to make sure that you know about our website, which is www.infogamerhub.com. Here on our website, you can find all of our videos, tutorials, and game dev assets all in one place. But to get the most out of our website, you'll want to sign up to become a member, which will give you exclusive access to all of the copy and paste code for most of our tutorials, as well as free or discounted access to all of the products in our online store. If you sign up today, you can get this deal for $3 a month or $30 a year and you want to act quickly because these prices will soon be going up. Now let's get on with creating stack color. To get started with creating your ground or platform prefab, you'll want to create an empty game object. You can do this by right clicking in the hierarchy and then selecting create empty. I've then renamed this empty game object to platform. The next thing that you'll need to do is create three cube objects as child to this empty game object. This is done by right clicking on our empty game object, going down to 3D object and select cube. The first cube object I've renamed to ground. The next I renamed to wall L and the last I renamed to wall R. For the ground object, you'll want to make sure that the position is set to zero in the X, zero in the Y and 0.5 in the Z. You can then leave the rotation alone and set the scale to five in the X 0.5 in the Y and 1 in the Z. For wall L, you want to set the position to negative 3 in the X, 0.25 in the Y, and 0.5 in the Z. The rest of the transform can be left alone. For wall R, you can just duplicate wall L and change the X position to be positive 3. Now for all three of these cube objects, setting their Z position to 0.5 in relation to their parent will allow us to scale the parent object in the Z direction, which will stretch the cube objects in one direction instead of both. The next thing that you'll need to do for both wall objects is set the layer to ignore raycast. And the last thing that you can do for all three cube objects is set a new material. For this, I've created a folder in my project window called materials. I've then created a new material called ground, which you can create by right clicking in your project window going up to create and then selecting material. This ground material is just a standard shader with the albedo color set to a dark gray. You can then apply this material by selecting all three of your cube objects and then dragging the material into the element zero of the materials array. So now that we've created this object, I'm gonna set the scale of our parent object back down to zero in the Z direction. You'll then want to create a folder called prefabs and you can just select your platform object from the hierarchy and drag it into this folder. That'll create a new prefab out of this object, which we can then drag from our project window into the hierarchy to create more instances of this object. All right, that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to create the game stack color. Make sure that you click on the next lesson or follow along with our playlist. Finally, make sure that you subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date with all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.